If you have model railroading questions, I have the answers right here in this video from other viewers that asked those questions. The first one isn't a question. This is on the video that I did recently about this Nano and the DF player. This is information that I want to give you that I found while doing this. You'll notice that uh, I have this soldered directly to the circuit board. Well, when I first did it, I soldered it on there and then I thought maybe I should put it on a header or something so I could take it off easily. I wish I would have done it then because that's what I'm gonna have to do now. I got this one started and I pieced together some headers that I had. I don't have it soldered in yet, but I ordered some headers that will fit nicely on there but the reason for that is I put this barrel connector on here and apparently when I was testing it I must have shorted it out to ground so on the VIN connector you can't do that it'll destroy the chip or it'll destroy the voltage regulator that is underneath and also I said that you could use a DC power pack on there. If you're using a DC power pack, make sure you have the polarity correct. If you don't, you'll also burn it up because it does not have reverse polarity protection on there. It has ver reverse polarity protection on the five volt and the 3.3, but not on the VIN. So keep that in mind if you plan on using a power pack from your DC train. Now I had some questions on the DF player also. Now when I did, when I originally did the DF player, I didn't do any fritzing diagram or anything on there, mainly because there was no uh, fritzing diagram for the DF player itself. But I've had a lot of questions about how do you hook it up? You don't have a diagram on it. Well. In the description of the video, I put a link to the DF Player Mini Wiki, which has a diagram of how to hook everything up on there, and I'll put it up here on the display. And I'll put the link in the description of this video also. But that's one of the ones on the DF Player. Okay, the AT Tiny Chip. Can it be programmed over and over again? Yes, it can be programmed over and over again. And I have a couple of them right here that I was experimenting with. You could program them over and over again, as long as you do it the way that I showed you in the video. You could either use that little programmer. Here's the one that I, st I still have it. I have this one from SparkFun. You could use the programmer here, or you could do it with the, your Arduino Uno or any Arduino using it as a ISP. On my video uh, about the uh, budget LED wiring, Carp Andre, he said he uses a larger soldering tip and puts it to 300 degrees centigrade, and melts the insulation on the wire. So I still have some wire right here instead of having to scrape it off. And then someone else uh, said that they used lacquer thinner on it. Okay, I haven't tried it with 300 degrees centigrade. I'm not sure what 300 degrees centigrade is, but I've tried it with 650 degrees Fahrenheit and it wouldn't do it. Maybe I just didn't do it long enough. But anyway, that's what he suggested on there. Okay. Okay. Also, I, I forgot one. There's also one on the Nano when I was talking about the uh, this one right here. The Nano, especially from Alagoo, you're going to have to download the driver for it. It's the 340 chip on there. And that's for anything that has the 340 chip. You're going to have to download the the driver on there if your computer doesn't already have it and use the old bootloader to program it because it won't work and someone 
uh, suggested that some time ago when I was having the problem and that's, and that's how I got it to work they suggested using the old bootloader and that did the trick on it but I had already uh, downloaded the 340 chip uh, driver and that didn't do the trick you also have to have it set for the old downloader so that's that covers this on the nano and the DF player on my video about choosing the right DC throttle a lot of modelers are trying to use their original starter set DC power pack when they expand their railroad and they're running into issues of it because those starter power packs don't have enough power to operate more than one locomotive normally I mean they're they're basic starter power packs you can't run five locomotives on your layout with them and I've had people you know tell me that they're trying to do it and it won't work uh, that's right it won't work because those are starter sets and they're made to run one locomotive on that starter set so you're going to have to buy a DC power pack if you're going to expand past that starter set. Okay, a lot of people are asking me coding questions on, you know, the Arduino stuff and on DCC++. If you have a problem with it, send me an email. You can see the email down in the description. I have my email down in there. If you go to my webpage, it's right at the top. You can see it up there. It's Tom's Trains and Things at gmail.com. But it's better that way. If you have a problem with the uh, the coding, it's easier to read the coding if you put it in an email because if you put it in the comments, it is not formatted the same way. You don't get the line numbers or anything else. And also in the email, you could send me a screenshot of the error message. This is what I ask people to send me and it never happens and it's hard to troubleshoot an error problem when you don't have the correct error message of what it says in that red line or what it says underneath that in the black bar modelers are asking questions on here and I give them a solution most of them don't come back and say that took care of it or no that wasn't it some of them have and I really appreciate that. But if I give you a solution for something, let me know back if it worked or it didn't work. That'll help me, that'll help you, and that'll help other modelers along the way if they run into the same problem. I could be telling you how to do something and maybe it doesn't work. Well, if you don't come back and say it doesn't work, then the other people that come and read those comments they're going to try the same thing and wonder why it didn't work. Okay, now testing DCC. A lot of people have a misconception that DCC is a voltage. And it is not a voltage. DCC and even DCC++, because I get a lot of uh, questions about that also, is what voltage is it? it doesn't have a voltage it's a signal you can if you put your meter on the track on your lowest AC setting like on my meter here it's it has an auto range but if I put this on AC right there I'll be able to read that there is a voltage on the track but that is the voltage that the DCC signal is riding on in other words, the DCC is a square wave signal. It's not a sine wave like AC, but it could be read on a meter with the AC setting. What determines the voltage on the track is what you set up on your command station. You have a power supply for your command station. Whatever voltage you put in there, you're going to see a similar voltage but a little bit less and just like on when I do DCC++ I set my power supply to 16 volts but then it shows up a lesser voltage on there and I'll show you a little uh, demonstration of that right here 
I just turned on the power to my Digitrack system and I'm going to turn this up to DC so you can see it. I'm going to show you what the input voltage is on my command station. You got to put it in run mode. 19.89 so about 20 volts going in. I got the Digitrax power supply and it's uh, actually 19.5 on there so that's pretty close that's 20. I got my throttle here and I have to put the power on so we'll go. Okay so the power is on. I could hear the sound on one of my locomotives. And we'll take a reading across the tracks. And you'll see I have approximately 14.3 volts on there. The DCC signal is riding on that 14 volts, but you're not really having voltage, you have a signal. And it's kind of hard to explain, but it's a square wave and it goes, this, the top part of the square wave goes up as high as 14.3 volts. AC current goes above 14.3 and then goes negative 14 and it alternates. That's why it's called alternating current. So it's not really an AC signal. So that's the difference between it. So you, you have almost 20 volts coming in on the command station and you have 14, just under 14 and a half volts on the, on the rail. Well, I hope that answers your question about the DCC signal. There's actually voltage on there, but it's not actually an alternating current. So we'll call it a signal. One of the questions I get a lot on DCC++ is how many locomotives can I run on DCC++? I did a Q&A on this before and I gave the answer and I think it was seven locomotives that I figured out based on what locomotives that I used. DCC++ was originally set up as an inexpensive way to get into DCC without spending the three or four hundred dollars for a DCC command station. Jeff Bodnar has a video that you could watch that he uses a booster on it so you could use higher amperage on it. And I'll give you a link to his web page in the description here. And he does excellent work with DCC++. Although he doesn't do it anymore, he's on to other projects now. And if you have any other questions about DCC++, you could go on a train board uh, forum. Greg Bodner started one back in 2015, and there's, I think, over 100 pages on it right now. He hasn't responded to anything in over a year on there but there are other modelers on there that are really into DCC++ and have some answers for all the questions on there you just have to weed through all of them and I think there's a couple of different threads on DCC++ and there's also one someone uh, told me about uh, DCC++ using the ESP 8226 or something like that I'm not sure exactly the number but I think that's it and that's a, a new version of it and somebody uh, is starting that out it's still being tested it's not perfected yet but I think it you could uh, do a little bit more with that and I'll see if I could find the link and I'll put that in the description down there all right this last one is a question for you has anybody used rock rail it's a program from out of Europe. It's, it's widely used in Europe and it's similar to JMRI, but I think it's more powerful and you could do more things with uh, automating your model railroad with it. So if anybody is using Rock Rail, let me know what kind of experience you have with it. I plan on testing it out to see how it works on here with DCC++ and everything else. I got some more train shows coming up. We're planning on going to the Atlanta one and probably we'll be on our way once, once this video comes out on Friday because we have to go up there the day ahead because it's a nine hour drive. So we got the Atlanta one. We got 
the villages and we got scale rails coming up and then in March there's two more the uh, real rails and um, plant city also and then in April I'm not sure what there is in April April or May but anyway until the next time we'll see you